Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Mermaid Swamp. I uh, decided to go back and get the ending that I missed. I'm only going to do one of those two endings. Hello? Is this not it? Oh, I need to go look at the thing and know that I need the planks first, right? Sometimes this game is very, like... I don't think this game is consistent with how it's... Like, predetermination works, you know? Because sometimes it's like, yes, I'll pick this up and then I'll use it in a couple of hours. And then sometimes it's like... You just don't know that that's the logical way around things. But whatever. Um, I also got some more of the, uh, things that I missed, as it happens. There is a line for when you, uh, open up the hydrochloric acid without knowing what it is first. Uh, and Rin takes a big old whiff of it and is like, ugh, stinky. And I think you even, in fact, get a little... Uh, yeah, number 33 there. Stinky. Um, I got additional lines with the one boy. Yuta? It's Yuta and Yuka. And they're both out of the story first. And so I never am able to remember who they are. What did I just get? Golf club. Um, anywho, so yes, I have not gotten the firewood this time. The unlocking noise is very satisfying, I will say. I don't know if I commented on that in my first playthrough, but it surely is. Boat key. But yeah, another thing that I realized that a uh, voice line where, or not voice line, but the bit where um, Yuta's beating off. He, in fact, actually is beating off. At the time, I assumed it was because he was turning into a fishman. And uh, no, he's not. He is actually whacking it, uh, specifically to the weird, gross fish state that Yuka is currently in. The fish was watching me. What do I have now? I need to find the rope. Oh, and the kitchen knife as well. Yes, I've been blowing through this, as you can see by my new and updated stuff. I'm only, I've only been working for 30 minutes here and recording it for four. Let's see. Oh, I need a knife from the kitchen, don't I? Is it this kitchen? Other oh, kitchen. Or no, I get it from um, Yuda when he goes crazy. And now I know that I need to... Uh, yeah. I know that I need to stick my hand in one of these. I think it's still this one. See, so yeah, the reason that I took the um, the thing last time, I took the firewood, was because... There were a couple prompts like that where it's like, take it or do nothing. Um, and like, take it, I assume, meant advance the plot. 
and do nothing was don't advance the plot. Because for the other things, it's like, do you take the boat starter? Because if you don't, you won't have the boat starter. Or do you want to push this thing aside? Um, and then, like, if you hit nothing, you just don't push the shelf aside and don't find the key item and don't advance the fucking plot. And I assume that the thing would be... The choice would be right before you actually put it in. Put the firewood in. Just get out of here right now. Nah, though, I actually learned that, um... We've, we've now been able to extremely clearly figure out that the deal is, yep, Utah. Oh yeah, I got more voice lines over, or well, lines over uh, that mermaid painting. And I think, yeah, she doesn't even do anything with it now. All right. I have now burned through all of my progress. Clip, wind up key, boat button, planks, golf club. I've oh, got to go back to the old house. But yes, the reason I started recording here is that I read ahead in the walkthrough for this route because, of course, now... I don't have to worry about getting spoiled for it because I've beaten the whole game. There we go. Yeah, it's another thing where you just kind of have to know. And yeah, this phone is the thing that signifies that um, Yuka is like exploding back at base, but because we haven't done that this time, now, uh, something else will happen. You know, of all the things I thought that the villain would actually be here, I didn't think misogynistic ghosts would be a problem. And yet, they have been, repeatedly. Shows what I know. So yeah, this is, this is new content here. Yuta... What are you doing here? Why, well, I'm nursing her, of course. Watching over her so she doesn't get any worse. Uh, get away from Yuka. Huh? I said get away from Yuka. Rin, what's wrong? You angry? If you're so tired, maybe you should rest a while. Shut up. Listen to me and get away from her. You're a freak, you know that? You've been weird since yesterday. What's this about? Don't blame me because you're irritated. You really aren't much of a woman, are you? Fuck you, dude. Why can't you be more like Yuka? Inflating. Organs. Failing. Oh, that does it. Get away from her now. Can't you be so docile and bloated as she is? Huh? See, it's specifically now that he's in on it. So I'll just come over here. Don't worry, I won't do a thing. Not a great thing to say ever, but particularly not convincing while holding a butcher knife. What are you thinking? Don't screw with me like this, you asshole. So here you go again. There's truly nothing cute about you. Uh, I disagree, misogyny ghosts. I said, come here, won't you kindly listen? Is that a Bioshock reference? Stay back. Hey, what are you doing? Open this door. Open up. Are you not going to let me out? I won't get mad, so please. <laughs> why Why do Why do villains in horror movies just lose it so quickly? Just like, now I'm mad. You know, earlier I was marveling about how good of, the, how good of a horror movie The Thing is. John Carpenter's The Thing. It's the second day, by the way, which is why I don't have my makeup. Um, and this is a fresh cup of coffee. I was thinking about how good John Carpenter's The Thing is. I saw a theory about, um, well, I guess it's spoilers. I won't talk about it. Anyway, 
Open up, there's no time for games, you bitch. Open the damn door. You just gone completely nuts. What the hell? Why did this happen? And when did it happen? Where did it all go wrong? Very good question to ask. Paintings? Paintings of Ophelia. Yeah, he kept looking at those. Yeah, and he was fine before that. So is it the paintings that did this? Damn, I gotta do something. Oh, and again, that's very nice of them that they give you the save menu. Like, hey, you are in a dangerous situation. You will be killed. Here's the save. Yep, well, that's not the way. Let me just juke you around here, sir. Oh, you do use the hammer. But you don't use it, you just click on the painting. I guess that's nice because you don't have to menu. Alright. That's a few down. Go! I don't think that counts because it's a weird gross mermaid lady. Now use my pocket full of posies technique. Haha, -ha, take that, you fool. Man, I know that the, like, waifu stuff doesn't really exist contemporary with Shakespeare, but, like, I bet it does on some level. Oh, this is bad. And, like, you know there are people who had Ophelia as their waifu. Does that count? Nope. She's holding the golf club. That's funny. That's interesting. He got, like, totally hung up on it. Ah, oh, crap. I walked into him. Well, that is another ending. Oh, yeah. I learned what the sub key is. It's shift. I don't know why it's called that. Run, Yuta. You'll never chase. You'll never catch me. I love that she has to turn to the right to smash them because she only has a sprite from that side. I really don't feel like I can get very far ahead of him, but I guess that's part of the point. Uh, well, that was very forgiving of him. Thank you, sir. I wonder if that's an intentional coding thing. How he gets, like, totally, completely caught up on the one painting. Maybe it's a sign. Yeah, he's doing it again. Alright, walk through time. Two in the bottom corner. One is in the dining room. Two. Bottom left door on the second floor. Oh crap. All right, I got my buttons back. Dude. Thank you. This one? Uh. All right, back in. So I learned this as well. This is unfair. If you pause it, he keeps walking for a little bit. And might be able to catch up to you, which is a little annoying. As it happens, uh, got my lefts and my rights mixed up. And then there's one more in the dining room downstairs. Uh, yep. It's nice that they tell you, hey, there's one in the old mansion, by the way. Yeah, there's one in the dining room in this area, but I got that off screen. Um, Sator, can you help me out here, fam? I have no idea where this painting is. One moment. 
rightmost door on the west side of the first floor. Rightmost door. Crap, crap. Oh. So he's got to be right up on you, huh? This is the end. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yuda? Huh? Stop making a racket, Yamazaki. What are you... Huh? So, and then in the other timeline, uh, he kills himself because it's a, a goal, an old ghost possessing him. Uh, very upset about the loss of another mermaid. Yuda attacked you. Don't be ridiculous. Like he'd do something like that. Uh, believe victims, Seitaro. Think I'd lie at a time like this? Even you could see what was going on. Guy collapsed with a friggin' knife in his hand. He did seem odd yesterday, but maybe he was just stressed. How did he seem to you? Uh, murdery. Dumbass. Uh, he wasn't himself at all. And he kept calling Yuka beautiful the way she is. And going on, why can't you be more like Yuka? Yeah. My head hurts. Was I sleeping? Oh, Ren Sedero, morning. What you doing over here? <laughs> hey, Ren, what was that for? That's what I'm saying, you damn creep. Don't go chasing around people with knives. I went chasing people? What are you saying? Play with dumb with me? I know what you were doing in here yesterday. You want me to cram you into the trash? Hey, Ren, stop it. You know, are you feeling okay? You were passed out. For real? You've been acting real weird since yesterday. Did something happen? Acting weird, really. I don't really know. Thanks for being unhelpful. Actually, I can't remember what I've been doing. I just remember looking for a map. Weird. Yuda, stay the fuck in bed. All right, sorry. Oh, um, I looked this up. The name of one of the uh, endings I got means 800-year priestess. That's the one where you eat the flesh of a mermaid and live forever. You just seems to have calmed down. Should be fine with her little rest. Yeah, but you should definitely get out the extension cords and tie him up, though. Maybe test his blood. Sadero, I'm going to go out and get help. Hmm? Been locked in this unfamiliar place. Crazy stuff happened to my friends. It'll be no surprise if we start going nuts. If I just walk, I'm sure to find a village or something. So I'm going to go look for help. Don't be stupid. I mean, I got crazy lost out there, and you don't have any sense of direction. Oh, shut your pie hole. You gonna keep looking for a map? While you're doing that, Yuka's... Yuka's still fine. She has a pulse and her breathing's calm, and there are no abnormalities other than her breathing. Other than her appearance. Sorry. And if you get lost in the goddamn mountains, I'll be the one who has to find you. Don't make me work extra for you, Yamazaki. Do a thorough search of the old mansion. You do a thorough search. I'll keep researching in the study. Get any funny ideas, I'll beat your ass. Dare you boss me around. I just can't stand sitting around here. I'm going to go. Even walking blind, I'm sure I end up somewhere. Normally you would, and this is what I argued. However, because magic is involved, you have no guarantees. Fat ghost blobbing around. So we also now know that um, I am unconvinced that the mermaids are evil. How the fuck? Why do they do this, man? Why are they like, hey, navigate a maze blind, dickhead? Like, there's just parts where you just are not allowed to see. Spoo key. Right. I think this scene is the same, so I'm going to skip it. Actually, I'm going to skip this whole bit. Actually, I've decided against skipping it because uh, 
I wanted to complain. So the author said that uh, Sidero and uh, Rayner are just supposed to be the friends who hate each other. And that's valid. I hate most of my friends. I enjoy uh, bitching at them. That's great. Um, and specifically, she said that they're not supposed to be romantic. Which I think is something of a relationship writing a fumble. I uh, don't really think that that's the case. That they're just friends. Like, they commit murder-suicide together. How romantic is that? Um, what's more, uh, the way that, like, they take care of each other. And Rin makes reference to sleeping with Sadero. Oh, that's probably when he gets possessed because like we can probably safely assume that the ghost has been beaten out of U uh, Yuda now. So then he gets possessed here. Man, you know what? I just realized it's probably not that uh, like physically assaulting somebody gets the ghost out of them. Because we, yeah, here's the thing that I destroyed. Um, because when you hit don't dodge, by the way, still one of the most annoying choices. When you hit don't dodge, um, what the, I'll look at the swamp first. Yeah, when you hit don't dodge, you, you beat the shit out of him, obviously, as we've discussed and learned. Um, maybe the go, maybe hitting him is not what gets the curse out of him. Man, they made a whole new set of sprites just for her swimming, and we only see it like this one time. That's kind of cool. Anyway, so yeah, um, the whole time they're like the the weird, gross ghosts, the misogyny ghosts are all like possessing a guy, and they don't want to take the hit, so they leave as soon as they're in any sort of danger. Maybe that's what happens, you know? Like the ghost sees a fist coming. And then, like, he's like, well, goodbye. And then leaves the poor sap to take a beating. Ghosts are such fucking pussies, man. Fucking misogyny ghosts. Get fucked. Also, is this not romantic? <laughs> Maybe not that part. All right. Uh, back in. I think I can pause it now because this is most of the new content. All right, I'm back in just because I really want to talk about. Got that kitchen knife. Could cut it open with a juicy treat inside. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, man? The juicy, delicious treat, of course. All right, and then I think I've got to get to the boiler room, but I can do that off screen. All right, we're back in. Do, 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 do. Where'd you go? I miss you so. So yeah, accepting this here will obviously kill you pretty much instantly. But because we fulfilled the first part of the, um, of the thing, uh, the first part of the ending, that means that we can save here and get the other two endings that we missed. Fuck that. Can't believe she calls him fucking tickless. The noive of it. All right, let me hit that save. Thank you. All right. Oh god. Where is there we go? He was in the frozen time for a bit. I will dodge him. <laughs> to 
did you vanish? Rin's kind of a bimbo. I'll be perfectly honest. Yeah, we can skip this, right? I love tracking a bleeding animal. It's so easy. So that's that part's the same. Grab the book. Which one of these is? Oh, Lord. Do. Don't I need to find a book to tell me what to do? Oh, indeed I do. But again, it's just one of those things of like, I have to know that I don't know. Right, so I'm going to assume that this ending might be really, really bad. I'm not even going to save. Because the ending where everyone dies sucked. Like... The ending wherein... Satoro and Rin survive is like... Okay, they do have a little double suicide. I said murder suicide earlier, but I think it is truly specifically a double suicide. Um See so in this presumably a similar thing will happen. Um, except uh, Yuka and Yuda will still be out of commission back at the ranch. Um, oh man, <laughs> it's scared me that Yuka has not had a single good ending yet. I mean, really, no one has. Immortality is cool, I guess. It's locked. <laughs> what do you know? It's locked. Quit playing around. Open up you. You're hiding something in there, right? This is... Ironic. In the other ending, she's locked in here. In this ending, she's locked out. Damn mermaids just won't let us go. That's why we've been looking for a stupid map. Thanks to my screw up Sato to die. So then why? I want it open. I said open, open, open up. Let us go home. I'm begging you, open the door. I want to leave this place. I promised we'd all get home. I told Sato. Rin, so that's where you were. Uh, it's getting windy. It might raining start raining soon. Uh, come inside and rest, Rin. Sadoro? Hmm? Oh, God. Sadoro over there. It's Sadoro. Sadoro, what are you talking about? Earlier you told me he drove into the swamp. What are you talking about? Look, the fog's thick, but across the swamp. He's over there, isn't he? Sadoro, so you were there. Sorry to keep leaving you behind. 
Hey, Rin, what's the matter? I don't see Satoru or anything. Get a hold of yourself. That's right, Satoru. He must be lonely being alone. I'll go meet him. Such is the nature of loneliness. Yuda. You go home with Yuka. There's no hope for me. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Rin, hold on. I'll go help. I, what? Oh my god, it's fucking Chekhov's gun again. <laughs> it was the gun hanging on the wall of the study. Someone, presumably the old man, just fucking shot the guy. Ah, you, you're... Yuka's still a mermaid, though. Beauty show remain beauty. And secrets will forever sleep in secrecy. As it should be. Oh, no. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you tell me your tank size? Secrets. Wow. That might be the worst ending yet. At least in the other ones, there's a mercy killing that comes of this. Because, yeah, that's pretty extreme. Don't dodge. Pizzazz! I, I'm so upset that that thing says don't dodge. Like, dodge and don't dodge instead of, like, dodge or fight back. Like, come on. There should be some indication that the the you're not going to just wipe out and get killed. All right, take a look at the swamp. Uh-huh. No dead bodies in here this time. All right, so this will presumably be the best ending. Swamp map. Hold a level, point the hour into the sun, yada, 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 yada. Thank you. No wonder she calls them gray hairs. Who the fuck has a wristwatch? Like, it's not even a digital watch or a smart watch. It's a fucking analog wrist watch. With hands and everything. Boating time. Right, and then Sidero hops on. Sidero, what is it? Going to that spot on the map, right? I'm coming with you. Wouldn't want you taking a dive again. Shut up, Baldy. I was going to say, I don't know what era the technology is, but actually, we do know. Uh, Ren has a smartphone. W one that appears to be an iPhone. Maybe not like a super recent iPhone, but not like an ancient iPhone. Like... No later than the 4, right? So that means that this has to take place in, like, 08, maybe? And, like, even then, even then, an analog wristwatch was kind of a weird thing to have. Hold that and follow me. You got it, boss. I'll just stud a step into your butt here. I wonder why she's cold. Is it because of this thing? Man, so if you get the almost good ending, you do not see the mermaids in here. So I'm also going to assume that this is also the longest ending. Because the good ending will probably have more content with everyone. All right. 
Mm hmm. I think the tongue is possibly the worst part about that. Because, like, yes, they are very bloated and their skin gets purple. The fact that their eyes bug out is pretty weird, but the tongue is weird. The fact that they just, like, it looks like they have a peach stuck in their mouth. Like, blah, you know? <laughs> Monster. No, wait, it's a corpse. A woman's corpse. A corpse? You liar. Wouldn't something that big and gross be... That's something that big and gross can't be. Wouldn't a corpse be rotten? It's not an ordinary corpse. It's preserved with adiposary. Presumably a uh, preservative for fatty tissue. Because that's what adipose makes me think of. Say again? It's a non-decaying corpse kept from open air and germs. The body hardens up and won't fall apart. Now I get it. I see what the mermaid legend's all about. You do? Why is it we don't believe in the legend? Because mermaids don't exist? That's right. There's no such thing as a mermaid, so we won't believe a mermaid legend. What if it wasn't a mermaid? Well, what if it wasn't a mermaid in that legend, but a regular woman? <laughs> that is cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where all the supernatural stuff comes from then, but maybe it's just general ghosty stuff. What I'm about to say is a guess, but if I think if we were to fit the mermaid legend into a reality that we can believe, it would go like this. A man did abduct um, and laid upon the seashore, a mermaid of clearest skin and scales, and thereupon did she live within his fish preserve. A man living in the mountains finds a beautiful girl on the beach, maybe a shell diver or someone going for a swim. The man falls in love and abducts her to his home. He fell in love with her in the water, so he has her live in a fish tank to recreate it. Ugh, what a specific fetish. The muddy swamp water brought horrible swelling to her fair skin, tore from her scales, devastated her melodic voice. Fool's hopes were in vain, and he brought death upon her. <coughs> Sorry. I'm sure you're aware that instant coffee is made of thousands of tiny crystals, and wouldn't that be just the best for shredding your throat? It's like drinking uh, glass powder. Always living in water drops the body's temperature, so she dies. It must have been felt like being strangled with floss. Her body froze, but she wasn't allowed to leave the water. So that's how this corpse was made. But why leave the corpse like that? Why the preservation? And why are there five of them? If you let a corpse soak in water for a month, it would normally be falling apart by then. It's hard to get the right circumstances for preservation. Like the note! Also, the note says that back in the early 80s, they didn't have refrigerators. Did they not? Or is that the, the 1980s? Like... I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm in my 20s. I've never lived a life without refrigeration. But then again, this is Japan. I think the refrigerator is old, though. When was the refrigerator invented? I'm going to say 60s, right? Wow, it's even older. 1899. Uh, practical refrigerators were introduced in 1915. Um, and an electric refrigerator became a standard in the 1950s. Uh, and this is from the Wikipedia article on Japanese kitchens. Okay, cool. Cool. Um... That all makes sense. Um, so yeah, maybe it's the 1880s. Or maybe they meant to write 1800s. Because he says the paper's falling apart. A paper from 40 years ago wouldn't exactly be falling apart now. It might be if it was really beat up. Whatever. These corpses are barely damaged at all. They were purposely preserved right as the body started swelling. Preserved purposefully? You found those documents, right? About a medicine to stop germs from shredding? What if it was for making preserved corpses? Ugh. The plumbing here probably goes to that boiler room. That's why all this was made, to continuously pump germicide into the tanks. They loved them, even bloated and ugly like this. In fact, perhaps this is what they loved most. Love these corpses. Some strange people out there, and they have some strange preferences. They know better than to talk, and no one else will ask. Perhaps the man couldn't let the girl go after she died. He couldn't watch her rot, so he took desperate measures to keep her here like this. Maybe eventually that became his goal. 
from the depths of the mermaid's wrath who suffered the loss of many a young girl, and this is why. What do you mean, you mook? I did think it was strange. The mermaid's curse taking girls from the village, that's the wrong target. Just one wasn't enough, I bet. The one of the legend was the first, and since there are five tanks here, these women are Ophelia's to the Sashida men. They admire the sight of a woman drowning in the water to the point of being the ones to drown them. What an incredibly specific and disgusting fetish. Because, like, on some level, I do understand a drowning fetish. It's like, you know, choke me, daddy. Ah, and, like, I also understand that there are people who have, like, other suffocation fetishes. Like, for example, I once read an article about um, quicksand-based porn. Uh, and apparently, like, it was common at some point. And the thing that I remember is that there's always some dumb pun where the girl's like, This sucks! And I don't know this for a fact, having never partaken in quicksand porn. But I found the whole thing ridiculous because normally quicksand does not work like that. It gets you to your ankles, your knees mostly, and you can float on top of it. And quicksand doesn't work like that. But yeah, it's just girls sliming around in mud mostly, and it's a very strange example of softcore porn. I've gone off on a ta on a tangent here. Where was where were we? They like drowning women. Yes. Um, and that makes sense, too. Like, I don't know what it is, but Japanese serial killers in media are always, like, so specific about their shit, man. Like, maybe even more so than regular serial killers. Like, spoiler alert for a 30-year-old manga now, but in part four of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, recently adapted as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable, an anime that came out about five years ago, so spoilers skip, like, 30 seconds ahead. There's a serial killer who loves women's hands, specifically just their hands, and uh, destroys most of their body except for one hand, and then preserves the shit out of that one hand. Um, and like, yeah, maybe it's just a thing about how Japanese people view serial killers and write it in their media. Also, I learned that while there is a bunch of foot fetish websites on the internet, this is in the same article I read, um... The article, in fact, the source of the article, I was doing a fucking project in my psychology class, and this is high school, high school psychology. And so we, for whatever reason, had to cut up a bunch of magazines, because that's what you do in public school in America. At some point, you're going to have to fucking cut up a magazine and glue stuff together. And I, being me, got caught up reading the articles themselves, and managed to locate in this presumably safe for work magazine stash for a high school class a Time Magazine article about pornography <laughs> and in this article they describe that there were hundreds of websites about foot fetishism and one about hand fetishism and since I was a fan of Jojo at the time I was like huh I wonder who the one guy holding up this single website about hand fetishism could be Although now I would argue that it could be Hideteki Miyazaki. Because have you all seen the trailer for Elden Ring? <sighs> anyway. Several tangents uh, away now. Yes. This does make sense. I just don't know where the supernatural stuff comes in. Because, like, we've seen curses and possession now. This is all completely mundane, you know? But there have been legitimate curses in possession. So, who knows? There's no real reason for Yuka's body to start swelling. And there's even less of a reason for Seiro and Yuda, Yuda to get possessed by and act like and, you know, be the ghosts of Suchita men. That's crazy. These women were abducted for that? But if this is the truth of the mermaid, I don't get it. Why'd they share the secret with the public? There's no point in creating a legend that exposes it all. It's pretty obscured. Yeah. The women. The Suchita women. Huh? If the male relatives were stealing girls, wouldn't the Suchita women find out about it? They absolutely loathed the men, but couldn't stop it, and they were frightened of being made mermaids themselves. So they made the mermaid legend to keep people away then at least no outsiders would fall victim. Mmm. 
I see. That does seem to sum up the whole mermaid legend, but what does that tell us, really? We don't know how to help Yuka get out of here. Let's head back, Ren. It seems finding a map and getting out of here comes first. Return me. Stop it, please. I don't know where you even came from, so I can't return you there. Let us be free already. In the one thing, Yuka said she's a hostage. Return me to the earth. Is she just a mouthpiece for the mermaids? That <laughs> okay, that would be so weird because like, Satoru and Yuta have been possessed by the Tsuchita men. What if Yuka has been possessed by the Tsuchita women to go say, hey, Rin, get me back into the earth, you know, return me. And this is this this whole thing is a chess match executed by a bunch of ghosts possessing a bunch of different teenagers and trying to get Rin to get the plot done. Are we going to use that crate of dynamite? That's right. You're not mermaids. Just normal women. Having this hideous appearance, you must hate it. Oh, yeah. Because, like, normally when a ghost is, like, a ghost is able to see their old bones and be like, ah, oh, my bones, of course. My bones. But, like, Man, imagine if you were in a really dumb pose when you died, and then your 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 skeleton's like scratching his bum or something. You'd feel like a real you'll feel like a rig, real pig's ear. And like, man, if you've been like plasticized and put in some creepy serial killer's fetish gallery, whew, I'll do what I can. Big old crate of dynamite. Super old machine. Who knows if it's still usable? That's it if we use this. I don't know if dynamite goes bad. I know that gasoline goes bad, and it's why The Walking Dead and Mad Max should have disintegrated. Actually, in Mad Max, there are people who make new gasoline. But things that rip off Mad Max should have disintegrated after, like, six months. Because gasoline goes bad in six months. And, like, Americans couldn't possibly know this because they drive so fucking much. But, like... No, yeah, gasoline fucking goes bad. I don't know about dynamite, though. Want to do what? Fill in this cavern? Here, it says detonator on the side, right? Think it was really the trick? The fuse is too short. There's no time to run, so you'd be buried alive. Now, stop being stupid. But I want to do something about this. If it were me, I wouldn't want to look like that forever. They want to return to nature for someone to save them. Please help me out. Say to roll. Way. Fuck you, dude. But you'll do it no matter what I say, won't you? Ugh, you never really listen. Yeah, but I get shit done. I'm fighting ghosts out here. You got possessed. I managed to atta attach some extra fuse, but it'll be 10 seconds before it blows. We have to get to the surface before then. You wait up above. I'll be here too. I suggest it, so I'm not leaving it to you. Fine. Run like hell when I write it, okay? Let's go. Okay, we actually, though. <laughs> Alright, that flash of red meant good, right? I like how it made a perfect square. The ground's caved in. That should fill up the caverns. Rin, what's wrong? Were you hurt? Hmm? Aww. Tears? They're not my tears. They're warm. They're the girls. Again, interesting. Like, proxy crying. And again, two competing... Like, factions of ghosts possessing a group of teenagers to get some stuff done. It's very interesting. And again, I was right. This is the longest ending. I wonder what happens next. 
Well, based on the other ending, um, the old man should come out of the house and gun us down with an ancient hunting rifle. Old man! Bang! Bang! The odious basement. You filled it in, then. You damn old coot. You knew about that, right? About those people? You still invited us here? The mermaids feared our entire family. They loathed us and could not seek our help, so they needed someone to seek help from. They've been long waiting for an oblivious third party like you. Mrs. Suchita, tell me. Did you cut the phones and turn off the power so we can contact the outside world? Yes, that's correct. You're kind of evil, dude. Why didn't you blow it up? Is it because of ghosts? You were in that village all along, right? When I went there, you were there. I assumed to keep anyone from talking. Yes, also right. The hell? Why didn't you do anything? It's your family that did this. Couldn't you hold a funeral or something? The mermaids fear us. They had never sought help before. I did what... Well, my ancestors did was terrible. I wanted to make up for it somehow, but no mere monument would save anyone. Yet I could not let go of the... Fuck you, dude! You're like, man, this is horrible. Still gotta get my mermaid fetish on, though. Fucking pervert. I could not let go of the girls. For I love them myself. Fuck you. You're not sympathetic. Is that what this story's trying to tell me? Because they're wrong. So awful and repulsive. Those mermaids too beautiful for this world. You damn fogey. I'm turning you into the police. Stop, Ren. It's not like the old man killed them. And the statute of limitations is probably up. Um. I don't think it is. The fog is starting to clear. I gave Mr. Yuta a map to the highway earlier. It should be easy to descend the mountains now. Mrs. Chichita, what are you going to do now? I suppose I'll mourn through the short remainder of my life. For the men taken by delusions, the departed mermaids, and above all, for my family. Yeah, your wife and children died because of this, huh? Yuta! Oh, Rin Sidro. Listen, the engine works. And oh, the old man came back. He gave me a map. Now we can finally go. You have no idea what the fuck just happened, did you? <laughs> All right. You to help me carry Yuka. We'll leave as soon as we can. Oh, wait. We should go thank the old man. The fuck we should? Uh, we, we already done that. Don't worry. We already done that. Yeah, we already done that. Let's go. Throw a tarp over her. <laughs> Alright, much easier to see now. We'll be off the mountain in 30 minutes. Better find a hospital quick. Hmm? Yuka. Oh, she's fine. I guess the mermaids like are like, hey, have her back. Yeah, so they just inflated her to be like a messenger. Like, hey, some fucked up stuff's happening. What a what a weird kind of red herring. I assumed that she was going to be the next victim, but in actuality, she was created by victims in the image of victims to let people know that there were victims to begin with. Weird. Ren? Huh. I... You. You. Ca... My wife does that voice whenever I yell at the cats. I'm like, come have some turkey, you fat bastard. She's like, don't yell at them. We down the mountains to a hospital, but there was nothing wrong with Yuka. Yuta's buying a new car finally. He wants to have one with a GPS, so he's working hard at his job. But I am never going to travel with him again. Sato was taking to call me Ape Woman. I suppose that's an upgrade from Yama Monkey. How mean can a guy get? Oh, and I... I don't have any lonely dreams about being cold in the water anymore. Nice. All right. That's good. Everyone lives except for people who are already dead.
is this song? It sounds like a Beauty and the Beast song. Also, presumably, Nautico. These are the voice actors for the voice version of this, which I did not play. But hey, they did their work. I have no idea if the voice acting is good, but hey, you should play this game yourself. It is pretty cool. Natsuichi. Common events, roster scroll function. Just from Photo AC, Illust AC, free texture resource home, free materials, Hibana, Pixta, uh, 123 RF, Wikimedia Commons, and National Diet Library Online. Sounds from Sound Effect Lab, Tairi Komori's Usage, Onjin, Mao Dashimi, Vidachi House, Pocket Sound, Karage Kosho, Netatei, Nenati, Nenatai, Hurt Record, Dova Syndrome, Classical Music Sound Library, Music Egg, and SoundDogs.com. Ophelia by John Everett Millet. A lot of Ophelias. Sketch Ophelia, Ophelia, Ophelia. The Garden of Earthly Delights by one Horinimus Bosch. I love Horinimus Bosch. And Mermaid by Bayan Mori. Carnival of the Animals 7. Pavane for Dead Princess. Sea Bottom Bloodthirst. Horror by Choco Milk. Grain Black Tower. Furnace Main Titles by Media On Demand Production. Time Pass by Audio Network. Fonts. Reference sites. Test players. Oh, for the remake. Shiro Gitsune. I always love seeing the test players uh, for any horror games like this. Last year when I played um, Cry of Fear, the test players were literally all just Kickstarter backers and the voice actors. Translation by VG Person. And the author was Uri. Uri is a woman, by the way. Goes by she on the internet. So yeah. Very, very good game. Thank you f uh, to Sarah for recommending it to me. That's my wife. Um, let's take a look at that bone eye. Scene illustraciones. So yeah, for... So for this route of endings and these endings, yeah, we only got these for this ending. We got that for Sadero Dies ending. That's the real bad ending. That's the mutual suicide ending. That's the everyone but Yuka dies. What a fucking asshole, by the way. Why would he have to kill Yuta unless he was going to preserve Yuka in the same way? Jesus. Mr. Suchita's an asshole. I hope that for the rest of his days, he's just, like, beaten to death by people with shovels, you know? Some sort of Sisyphean in torture. And then these three are from the last ending. So, yeah, one ending, one ending, one ending, and then these are all from the other ending. Download bonus illustration. And then on the um, site where the remake is hosted, there are translation notes. And then... Um, oh, Eri has her own website. VG Person... What did VG Person do? VG Person also translated Wi uh, Ib, The Witch's House, Madfather, Misao, Crooked Man, Paranoiac, Insanity, Rekinder, Hello, Hello, San... Like, this list is basically just like... These are all just like the, the, the cliff notes of, hey, what are some good RPG horror games? What did VG Person translate? Well, there you go. And he translated The Crooked Man, Misao. Nice. Good translator. Oh, and Mad Father. Oh, he translated Hero and Daughter. I got that in the last uh, Steam sale. Interesting. All right. Let's 
So, uh, and then these are just these are just additional notes from the um, uh, that I believe you unlock later. Um, Sedo likes to call Yamazaki Yamazaru, which means bumpkin, and sometimes he shortens it further to Kusozaru, meaning damn monkey. I translated this in various ways that it depends on the context, like Yamazaki when he's telling her to shut up. Sometimes I had him just say Yamazaki because it sounds exasperated enough as it is, and he can't be figured out to think of a play on it every time. Feely who? It's not much to say about Ren's literacy. The stuff she can't read is fairly antiquated with a few obscure kanji, but I'd still say it's laughable she can't even guess. Okay, so she is a little unusually um, illiterate then. That makes sense. Uh, Eleven nine is Japanese Japan's version of nine one one, so that isn't her being dumb. Uh, Yabi Kuni is eight hundred year priestess, and it's the nun the old man talks about who ate the flesh of a mermaid and lived a hundred years. They mentioned if you were too lazy to look it up. Uri mentioned in reply to my translation that the game must have been hard to translate because of lots of antiquated uh, and expressions and gave Yaobi Kuni as an example. But uh, really it's just those two things with old Japanese and the name of a legend uh, which was better left untouched. Not any special difficulties here. Orochi. Uh, I forgot to mention this when I initially made the post. The mirror in the old mansion had the kanji for the dragon in the Chinese zodiac. The time of the dragon is 7 to 8 a.m., thus 8. The best I could uh, muster was V-I-I-I. Give me a break. Uh, and then they mentioned the backstory. Seiko was married. Seiko Chichia was married and had two kids, Chio and Chie. Her husband died in a traumatic way. Her letter says she's on her own now, got compensation for emotional distress, and the kids need counseling. Chio might have been uh, a girl and Chie might have been a boy. So yeah, Seiko was married and then remarried Yukiko. Or Yukio. Sorry. Uh... So yeah, Psycho was married to another guy and then remarried Mr. Suchita. Uh, Yukio worried for her, offered a married Psycho, or maybe made some other offer which eventually led to that. Psycho found out what the men of the family did to the mermaids. Disgusted and regretting ever marrying the family, she left. Her stepmother also had thoughts of running away. And that's the grandma. Okay. Suchita men wouldn't risk Psycho knowing her secret and drown Psycho and her children. Uncertain, but it seems likely with Psycho saying, I don't know, to will we be killed. Yukio almost certainly learned of the foul play, which helped him realize how awful his family was, though since he still had to think for the mermaids and wouldn't let them go, it didn't exactly help anything. And then this is what I figured out, uh, but he mentions it here. It's not hard to work out, but the mermaids bloated Yuka as a means to get the others to help and find them. This is why Dream Yuka says she's a hostage and return to normal in the true ending. Oh, that's the true ending. Okay, so cool. In some games, the best ending is not the true ending and vice versa. I think that's dumb. Um, the help me and I'm sorry calls are Yuka speaking for the mermaids, either again asking for help, both for the mermaids and Yuka, or apologizing for their gamble that might end up killing Yuka. Uh, Uri mentioned the hairpin in the swamp and the clothes in the one room, the room full of gloves, I imagine were left behind by the mermaids. The latter probably while they were living among the family, the former falling out while being taken to the other side of the swamp. The mermaids probably gave Rin weird dreams to lead her on the right track and maybe make her sympathize. Theoretically, Rin and Yuka could have traded places. The mermaids, understandably, were unwilling to count on the men. Smart move. Yeah, because like, they seem to be the only persons that are in the interest of the Suchita ghosts. And so are the only people who could get possessed. What an interesting concept, by the way. P people have made jokes about it, but I've never seen it actually being used. Where, like, a ghost of someone is, like, period accurate and is racist or sexist because they come from a time period with that. Uh, the insane Yuda and Sator were in some sense possessed by the spirits of Tsushita men. The ghost behind Sator in the graveyard seems to imply it's fairly literal. They seem a bit more misogynistic and crazy mode, too. Again, they love drowning women, so this should not be surprising. Cool. And that post was made 
when was that? July 14th, 2013. So that's when this game uh, finished translation. Cool. Wow. And this blog goes all the way back to 2011 by the looks of it. Oh, VG person also translated. What a, I'm, I'm getting way, way off topic. Um, this is what I do for those of you who've never seen an LP of mine. This is what I sometimes do at the end of many of my LPs. I hang out uh, usually through the credits, talk about what I've done, talk about the game, um, and talk about any periphery or anything mentioned by the developers that wouldn't be prudent to come up in the middle of something. Um, this is a fantastic game. Very subversive. Really not at all what I expected. Every single time I'm like certain it's going to go somewhere, it does not. Like, I, I thought that this was going to end with a big old fight with uh, Mr. Suchita. And he only comes back in two of the endings. And we only see him come back in one of those two. <laughs> uh, like, I assumed that initially it was going to be all supernatural. And then later that it was going to be almost like a Scooby-Doo hoax. And there is a Scooby-Doo hoax going on. But there are still ghosts that arose because of said Scooby-Doo hoax. And all of those ghosts have unfinished business. And the fact that like the ghosts essentially fight over who gets stuff done is pretty interesting. Um, fantastic game. Shout out to VG person for a very good translation. Uh, again, to my wife, Sarah, for telling me to play this. She was right. As she often is. Um, and uh, again, shout out to Uri for uh, making this game. It's very, very solid. So yeah, um, I, myself, have an Alfred. And that is short for El Friedrich. Uh, this has been Mermaid Swamp. It is a free download. And I highly recommend you download it yourself and see what all of the stuff is. Because this is a cool, spooky game. Very few jump scares, but has a very, very good atmosphere that is held really consistently basically the whole way through um every halloween i play scary games um this halloween i played castlevania and another game that i have not decided on what it is going to be yet uh but it'll be coming out soon it might have the first episode might have come out already and then i went back to this to finish this and now we're back onto that but i digress last year i played a bunch of scary roguelikes cry of fear um and i also played dishonored with my wife but uh, yeah, um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Uh, and I hope you all have a very good day. Uh, I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs>